Today we're going to learn how to build electronic clock. I got this on Amazon. The link will be in the description. All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to put all the components on the board. These are all the parts. And if you're building this, you should follow along. It would probably be a good idea. So what I'm doing is I'm bending the resistors like so. So it'll be easy to stick in the board. So we have one resistor that goes right here. There's one. I'm just going to kind of bend the wires a little bit on the underside. That goes right there. We're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to bend the wire a little bit just so prevent it from falling out. And right here, this is where the crystal would go. Just so you guys are aware, I'm using a soldering iron called Pro 50. This will be in the description below. This is a butane soldering iron. Okay, so now we put, we, let's do the resistor pack. Because this is going to be a kind of a tough thing to do. We need to find the dot. There it is, it's right there. And it's got to be in the correct position. You have to f follow that pack to begin with that dot. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm just going to bend one of these so it doesn't move. And we're not going to really cut these. Okay, so now we're going to do. The resistor pack, see if we can knock this out quickly. So if you notice carefully on the board by the U1 number over here, you notice there's a little notch. See that notch? Very important. You take the socket and you notice there's also a notch on the socket itself. This is how it gets installed, like so. There we go. With a little bit of finagling, we can get it done. We can get her done. Okay, so we just flip this over. Try to knock this out. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can actually see more detail. Definite inc intricate work. Looks good. Not bad. Good enough for government work, as they say, right? The socket is done. Now we gotta put the switches in. Okay. There's one. You got to make sure that the, if you look carefully on the switch, you can see there's a line, like that kind of shape. That's got to be horizontal with the board. So if I just flip this over like so, and stick it on. I love this soldering iron, it really works great. Heats up so fast. Spin this around just so it's easier for me to get to. Starting to become a little tight quarters here. All right, so that's done. The switches are finished, and there is a positive and negative to this. The only thing I see is positive on here, so I'm assuming that this is the positive lead. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that. And there is a positive symbol here. 
So I'm going to assume we install it like so. I'm happy with this. This is a long video, I apologize. We're gonna do the power connector. And I'm gonna bend one, one of these pins. Since there's no component to the right of this here, I can actually bend that pin so I can actually get to it with the soldering iron. Make sense? Good. All right, so let's solder that. We're really, we're really, really close here. So you really see this. That worked out well. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're going to install the uh, transistor. Now, if you notice, there's a flat side to this transistor, okay? See, see the picture, the image? So you wanna put the component in like so, and that, that should be enough. Now, you have to be really quick when you're soldering transistors. And I'm gonna spread them, I'm gonna spread the wires out like this, these th so it's easy to get to. We don't want to blow up the transistor. Trista transistor does not like heat. So let's see if we can knock this out quickly here. Done. Okay, transistor is done. Now it actually I can cut these off. Oh yeah, now we need to do the capacitor. The longer lead on the capacitor is the positive so the positive goes like so capacitor goes installed like this and let's knock out the capacitor now they call this the electrolytic capacitor because it has polarity okay done okay now the capacitor is installed now if the capacitor is installed incorrectly it will pop It'll be like a little mini firecracker. So now we have all the components installed, it would, except for the display. And the chip is last. Let's pull this off of the foam. Okay, we finally got that in. I'm gonna do this side first. Then I'm gonna spin around and then do this side. Okay. Done. Okay, look at that, very nice. That's pretty good. Okay, so now we take the chip and there is a right way and a wrong way to install it. There is a notch as well on here. If you look at the notch and the dot. That follows the same suit, like so. Let's make sure the chip is in. Okay, so there we go. So let's see if this thing powers up. Plug this in right here. And read them and weep. Oh, that's not good. That sucks. <laughs> it really does. We did this properly. Did every component install correctly. Yet it doesn't work. So, I do not recommend this product at all. It didn't work. So what's the point? Looks like they may have sent the wrong component, the wrong chip. 89C4051 and on the paper it says 8089C2051. It looks great. Solder job looks great. Could be a faulty chip here. I don't have another one of these chips to test it. It's all good here. Doesn't look like it's functioning. So we heard a beep. We heard the, the lights came up on the bottom here and that was the end of it. It hasn't powered on since. It's, if you want to spend money and, and just practice for soldering, then this would probably be <laughs> your thing. But uh, anyway, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Creative Labs iRaw. Plug it in like, like this. The inside of this is really impressive. 100A in the Prius. The AC adapter, one amp charger, and it's big, and it's made out of aluminum. Okay, as you can see, the backup is complete. Like so. Now you can create the rate array. I mean, for the, for the price difference between the two,